Welcome to Ask a Puppy Trainer Show. We're on episode number 66. And please, whenever you're sending us your questions, try to give us the age and breed of your dog. Dusty, out. Ricky, I need a toy <laughs> if we can have someone toss us one. Oh, you're so cute. It's this, either my hands or a toy. I'm Bethany, this is Sparky. And this, get this guys, this is Charlotte. How cute is that? Oh my goodness. Even when she bites, it's like soft. It probably won't no, stay that not. way. It won't stay that way. <laughs> yeah, I'd say the retriever needs something in their mouth. Okay. Of course, the first three were soft. <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump right in here. I'm gonna start with um, a TikTok question. This says, uh, I can't send this by message, so I just wanted to say, because we do direct message questions on our, on our, tic on our uh, Instagram. But this says, I love your videos. Thank you so much for sharing them. Is there one that shows how to introduce a puppy to new dogs? Thank you. Um, no, not that I know of, because that would be more, whoa, hello. That would be more of us like sitting and talking you through it. However, we do have our online school. And so if you're interested in a puppy program that's very thorough and we, we kind of talk about some of that stuff, just go to thepuppyacademy.com and you can kind of see our you know, curriculum there if you want to, if you want to join. I, I would, I'll tell you this though, um, this is pro libertate. Uh, give us more details because then we will really outline this for you on our Wednesday live. But I don't want to get into the weeds just because I like more details, puppies age and breed, um, multiple dog household, are there multiple older dogs? Are those dogs good with puppies? What are you seeing so far? Um, or are you just trying to be prepared because you're about to get a new puppy? Let us know because otherwise it'll be a whole hour <laughs> on that one question. For the online school though, we do have the socialization video which yep. shows a large group of dogs and us bringing out one or two dogs at a time, introducing more dogs as we go. Oh, thank you. And we even show um, what it looks like when your dog doesn't really want to greet. Or was that a video? Or is that in the school? Uh, I we think. Calm greeting too. With yeah, the calm, calm greeting. greeting. Yeah. I think both those videos, calm greeting okay. and the socialization video, would help you. But yeah, check out the online school. A lot of great information there. Dusty wants the toy as well. <laughs> Dusty, you're next. <laughs> My old dog. <laughs> okay. We got a question from Tofu, who is someone we haven't seen in a really long time. Settle down. There Good. we go. There it is. So you guys saw, just before we move on to that one, you saw a lot of fussiness, kind of waiting the dog out. When I realized that the toy wasn't working, this fussiness wasn't settling on its own, I did kind of a hand to the chest, kind of a, hey, settle down. And she did, and then when Bethany gave her the toy, she actually did settle on the toy. So it was just that moment of frustration building. I gave, oh, okay, maybe not, maybe not fully. It only took a second. It worked for we, a minute. We cut off a portion of it though, and that's also if I'm holding a dog and I'm like, hey, hey, settle down, good. That's when I put the dog down or then put it back in the crate or in the playpen. I can't put a dog down that's fussing to get away because then I'm rewarding the fuss by putting her down, so I'm rewarding the demand. I don't want that. By, by having boundaries, guys, that's how you get focus. That's how you get a more self-aware, calmer dog that can focus. So mm -hmm. just keep that in mind. They had it with their siblings, they had it with their mom, make sure they have it with, with you too. Okay, um, are you gonna keep Charlotte? <laughs> she's a little, she's a little feisty. Ugh. Look how cute she is. I'll take Snuffy if you have him. <laughs> it's it her, her first, first day. day. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. She's doing good. Okay. Tofu says, um, she's a, bl Tofu's a blast. By the way, Tofu, welcome back. She was actually yeah. one of our first online students yep. from two years ago. She was beta. Wasn't she beta? Yeah. Beta. She was yeah. beta. Okay. I have two questions. Uh, background Tofu is now two years and nine months old, so about three years old, full adult dog. As a puppy puppy, she wasn't very barky. About a year ago, she started to bark at outside noises. She'll walk in a circle, sit at my feet, look at me. It's cute, but the barking has gotten more frequent and longer. Uh, I just watched an episode about a six month old Irish doodle. Probably ours. Okay, should I try the same approach, like a body block and maybe trying a pet corrector? Pet corrector just squirts out air. It interrupts the cycle of arousal. It makes that like like a semi uh, breaks, like you know, like that. Uh, tofu plays well with most dogs, but lately she's been going into the neighborhood and aggressively barking at two chocolate doodles. 
but she plays with um, other types of doodles, uh, black doodles, English cream doodles, chocolate Labradors, a few pit mixes. I've got lots of detail here. This is what I'm talking about, folks. I don't know why these two chocolate doodles um, anger her so much. Thank you. Is she a doggist? Is she a doggist? That's yes. what you're going to say? That's not what she said. But here's the thing. Dogs can, even dogs that are dark colored, it doesn't matter. Dogs see in shadows. They can see some color, but everything is like, you know, 50 shades of gray. Yeah, sort grayscale. Of. Yeah. And I know it's not grayscale, it's something different, but that's it's, the yeah, best way to first explain it. Yeah, they can see a little color, but they are very, very uh, alerted if they see, you know, all the shades of gray and then they see something really dark. It just catches their attention more. So dogs can absolutely have issues with people with different colors of skin, dogs with different colors of fur, or they're more likely to because at first it looks like a shadow. So for instance, my little dog Happy, anybody, it, she's 15 years old now, but when she was young, about this age, she really struggled if people had hoodies pulled over their face where it like created that shadow it and it covered, like yeah, and it covered their arm. It looks like just a, a big black, yeah, blob. And so because of that, it may seem that your dog may have issues with certain colors. That's why they have issues with shadow. But that's not what's happening here, I don't think. Um, I would just say that there's something about these doodles that alarms her. Maybe they're excitable, easily excitable, and she can tell that. Maybe they're pulling on leash and the owner has no control over them. Do you know that one of the biggest reasons dogs are reactive on a leash besides no leadership, the other thing is they see all these other dogs without leadership. They're all wily, doing what they want, and then when they see another dog, they, they hyper-focus on them. Call it, it's, like, it's rude, it's mad-dogging them. And, and the, it triggers reactions from other dogs. And then before long, after being exposed to that for a couple of years, your dog is really reactive. That's because all the other dogs on the street in the city are, are doing that. So anyway, we all need to create a nicer, better world. Okay, so anyway, moving on. <laughs> but that really is a big reason why that we see all the time. It's their exposure to how other dogs behave on the leash and us humans just being led around by our, our dogs. And so I have a feeling there's probably something about these doodles that just triggers her. But honestly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You still have to try to control it. But I just want everybody to kind of understand some of the reasons why your dog might behave a certain way. I would just do a redirect. And so redirect redirection is not avoidance. Oop, I hit my mic. Redirection is not avoidance because I'm not seeing the doodles and like running around the street before Tofu can even see the doodles. That's not what's happening. I look at my dog and I look for arousal cues. Arousal cues are ears, if she has floppy ears, they'll be kind of to the side. It's harder with big floppy eared dogs, but you'll see this little extra kink in the ear when they're forward. Um, they go stiff, tail goes stiff, up and stiff. They puff up some, they posture. Chest. Chest, yeah, chest out, mm -hmm. so you notice breathing. I find a lot of dogs also turn the head in a like whip, like a whiplash fashion. So. And, and they stay hyper-focused on mm -hmm. one thing. What else, wrinkly forehead, you won't be able to see that on tofu, but other dogs, crinkled forehead. Those are all the precursors to arousal. And you, tofu mom, tofu's mom, you know what the intent is behind the arousal. It's gonna be barking. Mm -hmm. So, because you've learned that from tofu. So when you see the alertness, it's tofu, let's go, turn and move. You can't just say no, people. You cannot just tell your dog no. You have to also change the uh, eyesight, okay? Perception. Eye line, yeah, you gotta change the eye line. Now maybe, if hopefully most of you have practiced enough to where you can just do a bubble out and around and it's fine. Um, that's what I can do with most of my adult dogs most of the time. But if a dog is barking right at us or pulling intensely and staring us down, I try to give more space, even with dogs that are not reactive. Why? Because I don't want my dogs to become reactive. Mm -hmm. Reactive is a stage. Every dog has a number in their head. It could be 500 greetings where they see this dog and that happens. And maybe on the 500th, on the 400th, they see that and then out of nowhere, something in them snaps. 
that's actually what creates dog reactivity and overexposure of these bad situations where they don't see your leadership and they don't feel like you're in control so they take control of the situation and I think that's some of the hardest things you could do. I mean, even just body blocking in that situation can be hard. You see a dog, your dog's already watching, you might be a second too late. You see them turn in the corner, you see your dog getting ready to look, that's already when I'm bubbling, especially if they already have that negative association to those two dogs or any dogs that show an overabundance of energy with a lack thereof control. So basically, if your dog is already barking out on a walk, you're already, you already missed all the moments. You just need to get out of there, ride the dog, you know, ride out the reactivity and then try to do better next time in more controlled scenarios like dogs behind a fence and things like that. But you need to turn and you don't just turn once and hightail it out of there. You know, try to turn and then as the dogs are hopefully across the street and if they're not, you need to cross the street, then as you kind of flank each other, right and then you can kind of turn again and go and go with them on the same side of the street and then turn again as they keep moving then turn again work your dogs through their emotions we're guys. proofing the distraction yeah passing it yes. once and then moving the way just yes. basically tells them that you're always in move away yes. but if you need to proof something that means that you're helping them deal with the situation until they can do it in a positive way that probably won't happen in one day that'll probably happen in multiple weeks of doing it over and over and over again we've been known to take dogs out to a particularly challenging situation uh dogs for us on the green belt that's like this big walking area they, there are a lot of dogs that bark at everything. I'll take a dog down there so they can hear the bark and I can work them through that and proof them to that environment. Now when it comes to inside work, it's a bigger pain in the butt, but yeah. it's kind of the same thing. So you can add an interrupter, you can use a no, like body language, like hey, tofu, no, and you can kind of move in, pick mm -hmm. up leash, little leash pressure, move in, pause, redirect her to place, cut it out. You could try a pet corrector, but the, all those, all the pet corrector is, is, is an interrupter to regain her attention, to then work her through her emotions, okay? And so, um, and you don't wanna switch from, from like a body language, hey, no, cut it out, place, good job, tofu, let's go. Good, tofu, let's go. No, you don't wanna switch like that. So as you're working your dog, especially cause this is an adult dog, but I still want to address it because we know tofu's family. Um, you wanna keep that, that calm, I'm in charge energy. Now, are we in charge because we're alphas and we just take control of our dogs? No, I mean, that's true, but that is not why. Um, we just do what works and what works is our dogs feeling supported. What works is our dogs feeling like we can handle the environment. We don't need them to do anything except maybe a little bit of alerting, but then they need to calm back down. Alerting is very natural to dogs, especially an adult dog. With puppies, we try to curb it more um, so they don't get out of control, but this is an adult dog. So alert, alert, and it's like, hey, that, you know, that's enough. Um, I've got this, it's my house. But you also need to be making sure the dog knows it's your house in lots of other ways. So they don't just walk all over you in, in other ways. But that's, that's a whole nother topic. My point is leadership, the whole pack thing and alpha thing and all of that, it just means help your dog know what their role is. Guide them, lead them, be a teacher. Okay, so if you teach a classroom, that's the same thing as being the alpha in a relationship with the pack, okay? They just look at it that way. Alpha is such a buzzword, that's why I wanted to point that out. I went You're basically on... being the leader that your dog can look up to. Exactly. You support your team as Ooh, a good leader. You support your team. So anyway, you can do these things, but you gotta do something on the back end. You gotta, you gotta work with them. The only other thing I would say is why don't you um, teach a quiet command? Instead of saying no and expecting no barking, you have an adult dog, why don't you go enough or quiet and do a positive interrupter with food? So tofu family, why don't you just um, search the internet for positive interrupters and then you're gonna pair it this is our spin on it or maybe my spin because you're looking because you're looking at me like no just say no but but I, with my little dog happy we worked on no for a while and it did curb it but it was still there so as she got better and just less anxious I switched it to um, enough with a That's hand fine. with a hand gesture hand gesture so I would go with almost as if I was saying no enough and then food enough and I do it over and over again enough food enough food like 10 times and I would do this I'd keep a bag of food around for the first two weeks of training this 
And even when she wasn't barking, because we lived in an apartment at this time. And so it was like, I heard a noise, I'm about to react and I would catch her as much as possible before the barking. Enough food, enough food, enough food. Like, I'm not <laughs> kidding. Like that's how, that, that combined with everything else that we said is what you need with a dog about one, one year old and, and up to start to really curb this if they love the sound of their own voice. And we are moving on. You wanna do the short ones? Can you guys do a quick TikTok for Dina? Yeah. She's been on. Is an almost three year old golden doodle too old to learn to walk on a leash? Never. No. We've taken dogs from like rescues and shelters at 10 years old and completely retrained them. I have it, a nine year old dog right now that just learned how to walk. It just, it just takes more, it, it's a different type of consideration than it is with puppies. You know, with puppies, we're trying to make life really fun and help you learn and build build all this resiliency. And and with older dogs, it's the it's the consideration. Whoa, man down, man down. <laughs> I like that. Um, with with older dogs, in my view, the consideration is more about learning um, to go slower at their pace. Okay, not to make everything roses and, and wonderful like we do with, with puppies, but to just make sure we don't push them too hard too fast and expect something too quickly. But three years old, yeah, you, you can still, you can teach them how to do uh, everything, everything. I have learned that with three year old dogs, they have years of bad habits there. That's so true. they can be more challenging in the beginning, but yeah. you can push them harder. But also, more relationship, that, more about your relationship yes. that you've developed with your dog in the last three years. Now you're trying to change it, you're going to get some, some tough moments. But yeah. I also find that once you do work through that and you do beat the frustration, you can get through them a lot quicker. Puppies take months and months and months mm -hmm. to have a good walk out. We have a, a not a, a lab, no, a GSD, Golden, uh, German Shepherd that we're working with, super high drive. They'll be working with that dog for the next six months to a year, maybe in a year and a half, before their walk is exactly what they're looking before for. They can wean, before they can wean off of all the, the communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A yes. three and a half year old dog, you can go much faster. You can yes. go much more with the dog. Oh, we do actually recommend getting a trainer as well because you have those big habits that you're trying to then redirect to something else. They're more mature. Positive. Yeah, they're more mm -hmm. mature, so it'll go faster. We left these five questions and then more on Instagram coming in. Okay. From Vanessa Bugueno. I think I said that right. We'll see. Hi, puppy is Kelpie. Uh, oh, it's a Kelpie poodle. Born 9 April 22. I'm not going to do the math. Welcome. You can do that one. Four, that's it. Okay. So three months old. Um, how many hours should he sleep? This is a, if this if this is a kelpie, the type of kelpie I'm thinking, of, like Australian cattle dog kelpie, maybe Take never. <laughs> Take it. Never. Kelpie poodle mix. I was, I don't even know what a kelpie the, is. Well, it's a kelpie poodle mix. That, so. that I can't. I didn't know that mix existed. Um, they just made it. Kelpies are like the top five most challenging dogs in the world. Maybe not the world. It, it depends on if you put them in the, like, the protection dog sector, but it's like a cattle dog with Malinois energy. What's a Kelpie look like? It, looks, it, it looks like an Australian cattle dog without the oh. spots with Malinois energy. <laughs> and with a poodle, hopefully it cares about you more and less about biting things that move quickly. But my point is most dogs should be having a, a minimum under four months old should be having a minimum of 18 hours of maybe not full on sleep, but yes. downtime, rest, no stimulation. Good luck. Okay. Papa Pongo. I like the name Pongo. If my 10 week old Dalmatian isn't treat motivated, how can I get him to focus? You have a couple different tools. Quick, quick. You have a couple different tools at your disposal. You have food, you have treats, you have um, toys. Anything that builds drive, but also you might just have to build the drive of your treats as well. I don't, I don't like using toys. Yeah, I will. I mean, I'll do whatever hey, I can. Better relationship with with food. Feed your dog all their meals. That's how you build. Food and if drive. they don't want to eat, not a big deal. Yeah. They'll eat the next meal. If they They'll eat, eat the that next one. Meal. They, next one. Because your hand honestly, feeding them. Your hand. For a ten week old dog, your hand working go them. Maybe three days, four days without them eating a full meal and just kind of eating periodically mm -hmm. through the hand. But eventually you're going to get to the point where they realize they only get their meals from your hand. That's how you can start training them. It's how it you might take a drive. few days. It's gonna, you're going to build up to it though. At the most, we've seen it take like a week. Mm -hmm. Hello, 16 week old male corgi. Oh, nose basic, sit down place. How do we work on stay? Thanks. Uh, stay for me is a gradual progression. 
I reinforce my stay, I take a step back, I pause, I come back, I reward, good. It is a buildup. So if you try to get a stay and you walk 10 feet away and come back to your dog, they're probably not gonna stay that long. Also, a lot of people mistake stay with come. So they do a stay, they walk 10 feet away, then recall their dog to them. All that does is build drive to want to come, but it damages your stay. It We're, builds it builds anticipation for the yes. come and not focused on the settle. Yes, so when we do our stay, we go back a step, come in, good treat. Two steps, then three, then four, and then a break. And then we kind of let them move around and we do it again. So we reward to, reward your dog for staying rather than coming and mm -hmm. use place. Stop trying to do sit and down, stay on the ground. Use place because that way when you walk into your dog and they reset themselves on this very clear boundary, that's the best way to do it. Also, don't practice stay with a 16 week old near as much as you think you do. It needs to be very minimal. You wanna get focused. Move when I move, stop when I stop and come. That should be 70, 75% of your training. The rest is thresholds with crate, thresholds with front door, back door, calm, for working on calm for food, calm pets, that's where the magic's at, then focus on your stay. And if you're already getting Ooh. sit down on place, for the most part, you're probably already on the right track of teaching stay. But don't but force you need, it. You need more movement. You're really bad at this. You need more, more online school? You need that? more movement and more online school. You see how that feels? That's my microphone today. We need to hurry. Okay. <laughs> okay, if my 10 week old Dalmatian isn't treat, oh, we already did that one. See, you don't mark them off. I mark them off as I go, and you don't. There you go. Yes, now you get Sparky, no Bethany. So, uh, Nicholas says, How do I potty train my pup through the night? Do I wake her? Does she wake me? Um, I would say for this, it really depends. Go ahead and have a plan. Nicola, good. yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Go ahead and have a plan and, and then see how it goes. So if my plan, the night is different than the day. So if my plan is at night to do four hours and once or twice in a row, like very quickly close together, there's an accident, then I'm gonna do three and a half hours or three because you don't want to, your puppy to get in the habit of waking you up. Now that might teach you what your window needs to be. So if you are consistently getting two and a half hours, it shouldn't be that little, but two and a half hours, your puppy waking you up, you need to do two hours and get your puppy out to pee. It's a bad habit at night for your puppy to whine and you to reward them by going outside but you it's just it's a learning curve so hopefully that makes sense but also for the most part we want to teach a dog to hold it overnight uh i don't see an age here but if it's like a 16 week old puppy most of them can do about six hours overnight so build it up yeah to build it up to so you just got to play around with it. if you have like an eight week old puppy maybe you'll get the four hours so see what you can get and honestly if you try the six you get a potty accident we apologize now it happens but you got to test that boundary to see how long the dog is actually able to sleep for it um, hanging with Luna. I don't think you said that part. Uh, yes, I did. I, that's the first thing I said, actually. Yep. Yeah. We will go to the tape when this is done. Okay. My, we're, sorry, we're squabbling. Okay. My terrier mix, six months old, thank you for that, hanging with Luna, is having problems staying calm when I leave the house. Help. Well, first, I wonder if the dog is crate trained. And if the puppy is crate trained, how are you putting the puppy in the crate? Do you only put the puppy in the crate when you're leaving or at night? Because that's bad. You want something consistent. And you want to make sure you don't give your puppy any excitement or affection 20 to 30 minutes before you leave, 20 to 30 minutes before you get home. So if that means if you go to work in the morning, like most people, and then you're gone for a few hours and you have a dog walker or something, then you don't get your puppy riled up that morning. You work them calmly for their food, potty break calmly for food, back in crate, out again for another potty chance right before you leave. It's all very matter of fact. Save the affection for when you're home and you've been home for a while so you don't create that anxiety because you're, you're about to be on the cusp of separation anxiety. That's what that's going to turn into. So you want to make crating very calm, very low key. You want to make your comings and goings no big deal. And I would say, th thank you. Thank that's you. For, thank you for the support. I would I'll say, add more to it, so be ready for my support. <laughs> I would say that's, that's the biggest thing for me that you want to really watch is your energy. 
um, not just when you put the puppy in crate, but the 30 minutes before you put the puppy in crate in the first place. And just make sure that you're practicing this during the day, even when you're gone, okay? Or I mean, even when you're home, excuse me. All right, what do you wanna add? I wanna know how does the dog know that you're leaving in the first place? I mean, most dogs are smart enough to know when you're leaving the house, but that whole 30 minutes before you leave, I like to put a dog in the crate before I leave and then put that crate in a room that they're not gonna see me leave. That's true. I don't want them to hear my keys jingling. So and, I've got uh, my And for me, here. it's like, oh, where, where, where are my keys? Yeah. And that gets your dog upset. Everything is already by the door. Everything yeah. is set. Your purse is already set up. You're, if you're a guy, that means your keys and your phone and your everything is already in one spot. Puppy goes in the crate, wait another 10 minutes because when you create silence, they assume you've left. You can even open the door and close it and then just stand there. You hear it barking, maybe tap your wall. Hey, settle down. That's your wall. And the dog is like, whoa, whoa, they're, they're, they're still here. So you kind of shock the system. You disagree with the barking and the frustration. Wait another minute. They do it again. Tap the wall again. And now the puppy is like, okay, they're, they're not leaving. They're still here. So when you do finally leave, it's quiet. It's calm. Creep they out. They get that deadbolt real quiet, if you can. And then most we, time- We WD-40 our doors so they don't squeak. <laughs> I do actually WD-40 my doors. <laughs> yeah. Not kidding. Oh um, yeah, you just wanna, you don't want them to have that association of you leaving set to all the things that you do when you leave, like keys, phone, all that good stuff. Do you wanna read a question, Ricky? Yeah, we are in the present of Toots Farm. My 14 week old is barking, ear piercing bark for hours while I ignore, I need a better way to help. 14 week old puppy that's ear piercing bark for hours. Does it say in crate? It's not. Bethany, go. Um, we kind of just covered that. It, not as in depth as what it sounds like you might need, but please listen to the question before, okay? And then the second thing I would say is do not give any excited affection. Now, I know this is hard with puppies but I don't want to go on a soapbox, but it's also what's ruining dogs is humans constantly representing excitement and nurturing excitement. So make sure that all your petting is calm. It's relaxing. So if I've been down right now, Dusty, Dusty, come. What Hup. you pet is what you Hup. get. And I'm like this, oh my God. Oh, you're so cute. You're so good. And I get the tail wag and I get excitement. That's, that's, a, that's a no. It needs to be like, when you've been down and pet your puppy and you go, oh, good, good job, I love you, good job. The, the tail should remain still and the puppy should melt. If you're getting nipping, biting, I wanna get away, I'm tired of this, or you get excitement, then you're doing it wrong. Your puppy wants to be worked and that's the next thing and, and then I know you guys can add is take all of your dog's food for the next week and hand feed and work. First, just start with come. Handfuls of food, come good food, come good food, then place. Those are your two main things, hand feed everything. You need a different relationship with your dog on top of the crate structure that we talked about earlier. What were you gonna say, Ricky? Oh, she said yes, barking in crate or outside. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You have a lot of frustration that you're combating, mm -hmm. and we do have probably one in every 20 dogs that have barking to that level. Even if you do everything right. Yeah, and honestly, it's just, it takes a while. Do everything she mentioned, do everything I mentioned, and honestly, look at some previous videos. We probably address this in every one of our Wednesday lives every single week. So yeah. there's a lot of information you can kind of backtrack on too. And you can check out the online school if that's something Absolutely. that interests you or uh, get one-on-one -on -one guidance because you need to be able to refocus the 14 week old outside if it's barking at other things, you, you gotta get that redirection right, right away. You need to build leverage, build relationship, build leadership. You might, it sounds like you probably, at 14 weeks old, even if you ruin those puppies, they should still be doing good, pretty good at 14 weeks. So it sounds like you can be doing everything right and you're still gonna struggle. So it sounds like you need a little extra help. I see a question, last, can we do Last this? question, we have two of these questions. How okay. to train your puppy not to eat poop? How to train your puppy not to eat poop. Sparky, go! Uh, I talked about this last night, <laughs> love it. Um, take your dog out on leash. Anytime they go poop, you literally wait for them to go poop. You have to go out there with them on leash. And once they're done, pull them away from it, pick it up right away. And honestly, if you got cats in your neighborhood, you need to prowl your yard before your dog goes out for potty because you gotta pick up any poops that are in your yard to prevent access. 
Um, if it's inside the house, then you just gotta be better about keeping them on leash. The dog doesn't get freedom to make these decisions to go outside and pick up the poop because you're promoting that decision unless we keep control, we keep leverage over our puppy. So it they becomes, go, it becomes a habit. It becomes yeah. a habit. Once or twice, honestly, not a big deal. Three or four times, now it's a problem. Yeah. Five or six times, you have a habit and it takes a while to break. I literally have a dog that's been doing that and it's been doing it for six months. And she has been doing it every single day, preventing dog from getting to it for two, two to three months. But it got one poop yesterday, and now it's looking for it every single time it goes out. So uh, I've heard a lot of different tricks. You can put like a, uh, it's like for I can't, I don't want to give you the measurement. I want you to look it up. But like a teaspoon of um, uh, pineapple juice in their food, which be makes careful it about that. Bad. Citrus is toxic to dogs, so you have to measure it out. You got to actually look up the measurement. There's you can other do things. Coprophagia. Yeah, there's other I've things you had, can buy. I've even had people spray it with white vinegar and do a dash of cayenne pepper. That's what one of my clients did. The dog picked it up, never went for a piece of poop again. Um, I will say just real quick, because I've had issues with this with, with my dogs, um, because once it becomes a habit, especially once it becomes a habit, it's really hard to get them out of it. That's what he was talking about. So something that you might want to look into is, I would say first, is really look uh, into anything nutrition wise that your dog may be missing. Because sometimes that's why it becomes a habit in the first place. All, like I would say half of the rescue dogs I've ever met that are skinny, you know, that have been out, you know, as a stray just for a couple of weeks will start to do that. And now it's a forever thing. Yep. Even, they need it for the extra nutrients, but it becomes habit. And yeah. it's like one of those lifelong things that you have to break. But it is common with puppies. Bleh. So good luck and uh, start off with management and preventing I found out happening. the dog was eating poop because it was licking my face and going up my nose. That's and then awesome. she told me that right that's, after. That's, that's such a great way to end yeah. it. She saw it happening and told me after the dog was done licking my such face. Such a great way to end it. Bye, everyone.